I'm speaking with Armin Yalnizian, uh, an economist with the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives. Armin, you've just come out of the budget lockup. Is there anything you like in this budget? Uh, I guess the sign that this government actually had to turn around and revisit its thinking from 68, 69 days ago. And there's a lot of really good signs there that they understand that they had to change their way. But it's totally inexplicable that they missed job one, which was to fix unemployment insurance benefits for the jobless. So you get a situation in which we know six out of 10 people that lose their jobs have no income support through jobless benefits. Agreement across the political spectrum that it needs to be fixed with this wave of job loss. We've already lost 100,000 jobs in just the last two months. We know hundreds of thousands more will be lost. And absolutely no fix to improve the access to income supports. So if you're sitting at home and worrying about losing a job and then thinking, I got more than a one in two chance of not having any income support and there's no other jobs to be had, then you're looking at really cutting back severely for a while until you can find a job and if the joblessness lasts for too long you're looking at selling your assets running through your savings maybe selling your home and if you don't have a home which is the case for more than 40 percent of canadians having to find a cheaper place to live of which there is no stock of that either so we're actually looking at the potential for a massive wave of economic dislocation utterly avoidable. avoidable. They spent $18 billion, they could have fixed DI many times over, and yet refused to do something about the number one concern of Canadians that are sitting at home wondering, are, am I next? Am I going to lose my job next? It's incomprehensible. What do you think about the infrastructure spending that uh, itself that was announced? Do you think it will be flowed out effectively? Do you think it's actually going to do any good in, the, in, in communities and in the economy? I think it, uh, it's astonishing that for every dollar of infrastructure that these folks promised to provide, the prov province or the community or the municipality has to pony up 73 cents. And lots of projects are ready to go, but for want of cash. And these are projects that only get paid once the bills are submitted. So we can't even start the projects now because of the conditionality these folks have put on infrastructure funding. Again, they understood they needed to do something about infrastructure. They made the right noises. But the conditionality attached to that money is such that it will not flow quickly or easily. We are back in the situation we were in when they announced $33 billion worth of infrastructure and virtually none of the money that they were supposed to pay has gone through. Only the, the gas tax, which they didn't touch. They could have increased that too and they didn't do that. Do you think that the conditionality could have actually been imposed in an attempt to not spend the money? It's difficult to say what their thinking was. Uh, all I know is that the two things that they could have done to make this recession shorter and less profound, um, they didn't do, which was to fix the amount of income support available for the unemployed as well as other vulnerable people and to do something about infrastructure to be able to create jobs quickly and in communities across this country while preparing that foundation for the next wave of growth that we know is going to happen across the country. It, there, in the budget there is some money, how, problematic or not, for infrastructure, some money for industrial aid. I don't see much money aimed at human services and the kind of employment sectors that, that affect women pr principally. Do you? No, because I think they were very concerned about not doing anything that you couldn't cut at the end of two years. And by nature, those human services are ongoing. They're not counter-cyclical. So you've got a lot of man jobs out there, but not a lot of jobs for women. Um, and even in the training money that they provided in employment insurance, like if you're in the club of those who get employment uh, insurance benefits, you now have access to more training. But a lot of that is going to be for man jobs, for construction, for apprenticeship, uh, and so on and so forth. So, you know, women, make, uh, women who are going to lose their jobs are really up the creek. And on top of that, they've decided to rescind pay equity and rewrite the laws. So it's a very harsh budget for women, I think. In closing, what do you think Canadians really need to know about this budget to understand what it's about? I think they need to know that this government is not there for the hundreds of thousands of people that are going to lose their jobs. And it could have been. It could have absolutely been there to prevent the bottom from falling out for hundreds of thousands of households across this country. And I, I would hope that Canadians would stand up and say, this isn't good enough.
And I hope our elected representatives do that in the House. Thank you very much, Armin. Thank you.